Okay, um, you know about Bible study, and uh, we started uh, studying the Psalms, so uh, I encourage you to come for that. We're going to go soul winning after the service, and and uh, uh, pray that uh, you come join us and and uh, and uh, share the gospel with people. That's what we're about at Vacation Bible School. You can see uh, in a couple of weeks, uh, so get ourselves ready. Amen. All right. Let's stand and sing Lord's praise. Thank you. 
we're so grateful for uh, your allowing us to come together this morning. I'm, I'm thankful for everyone that's here this morning, each and every person. Um, and uh, praise you, Lord, for that we have a place where we can worship you, um, sing praises unto you, uh, just, uh, study your word, be here for each other. And Father, please guide us because we want this service, as always, to be pleasing to you. In the Lord Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Change God, not change God. Sorry. 
Yeah. How many how many years have I shown that? I don't know. <laughs> 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 Thanksgiving. Peggy, please. Patience. 
home. Yeah, when she when she traveled home. Uh, Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay, so patience. Safe travel home on Tuesday. And I have to go get her, so and I'm a little nervous about that. About going to get her? Yeah. Okay. Because you can't just sit in front of the airport. Do you know? You know, I don't know what they're doing up there anymore. It's either drop off or pick up. Yeah. They're, right there. They're, they're, there, there used to be a place where you could wait. Yeah, but, but now, yeah, it's my first time. Yeah. I, I used to practically live up there, but now it's so different because they, they're all that construction. I don't know what they're doing up there. Uh, but there, there was a place, like a cell phone place, where you could yeah, wait. It's a dollar. I just don't want her to really? get off and be out there, and I'm not there. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just sit there. But the, but the escort ought to wait for her at the, you know, down where you yeah. pick her up. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so so for patience, and let's pray for Mama, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, what else? And Peggy, your foot, too, you said. Uh, yeah, I stepped on the beat twice yesterday. Oh. oh. <laughs> 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 I should have been out without my shoes on. I hate It's feeling a little better now. The swelling is going down a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I saw your post. You saw that I saw it. I don't, but I'm not missing church. Way to go. Way to go. I already felt bad. I had to miss Wednesday nights. I had to drop her off. Oh, but, but yeah, it's a good, good attitude. What, what else? What else we got? Uh, Jim. Uh, my sister, Carolyn, her surgery went well. He had a new, removed uh, half of her thyroid. Oh, oh, half of it? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's good. Her. Okay. And then, uh, so she she recovering well? Before, uh, she recovering well? She recovering well? Chemotherapy. Okay. So chemotherapy. Okay. So, uh, so continue to pray for Carolyn, uh, Jim's sister, um, and the chemotherapy. And, you know, the, so well, at least they didn't have to take the whole thing. That's good. Yeah. Renee, you have a minute? Yeah. Um, Connie Falter. Connie Falter? She's my neighbor. She's having some treatments done. And she had a surgery for her Karen Jacobs. Um, we think that she had a, uh, well, her heart stopped when she was having a CT scan. Heard about with, that. With, yeah, so now she's in Allegheny General Hospital, and um, Ken, I talked to Ken this morning, and she's on dialysis. Oh, oh. Yeah, so I don't know, I, I don't know if she was, I don't think she was on dialysis before, so I don't know what's going on there. Could be her. Her heart did stop a couple times. Could be that her kidneys took a hit when the heart yeah. stopped. Yeah. And then uh, my brother, Richard, he, um, he, uh, I don't think he started his uh, chemo yet. Uh, they're doing a PET scan um, sometime in July. And That's gonna, prostate cancer. Yeah. And they got to do. Uh, they're going to do um, uh, endoscopy and a colonoscopy at the same time sometime in uh, July here. Okay. So, um, okay. So pray for for uh, Richard and okay, for Karen and for Connie. And for Ken too, because Ken's had health problems with Ken Jacobs. Yeah. Uh, keep him strong. He's, he's Yeah, um Kibby had uh Kibby had uh, called us about something and said that they were having this um you know, this two hundred year celebration, but everybody's sick, you know, mm -hmm. they hardly have any help at all with any of it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll pray for that. Thank you. Miss Madeline. Uh, I'm sorry for your friend Emma. named what, honey? Emma. 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 Oh, okay. So pray for so Syracuse. Okay, so pray for Emma. Emma. Tell you to remember the church. Pray for the church. I'm going to actually be preaching about that today. Okay, pray for church. Yes, for sure. Anything else? Rob? Yeah, I pray for my niece. Uh, Kelsey, she'd actually uh, give birth any time. So pray for Chelsea. Childbirth any day. Any any minute. Sounds like a... Okay. Chelsea? Anything else? 
Oh, yes, yes. So they let her out of the hospital. She went to her every day doctor. And they, I guess they like switched her medications or something. And then when she was in the hospital, they said part of her problem was she was really dehydrated. So she's been like keeping water all over the house. I guess she drinks it whenever she walks past. So she says she feels a lot better just from that already. Sure, sure. So for Jessica's grandma, what's, what's her name? Sarah Jean. Sarah Jean, that's right. Yeah. Sarah Jean. All right, Fred, let's pray for Sandy for her eye. Um, she uh, woke up with, on what, Friday with a big black floater and, and all, and uh, so uh, they were able to get us in over at uh, Dr. Saliti's office. Uh, Dr. Long, the optometrist, uh, saw her. Uh, he does a great job, he really does. And um, said that um, she had a, uh, what detached was from the optic nerve, and that was the best place, the vitreous best place you could. There's no tear in the retina or anything. Amen. Uh, but, um, but that's what produced the blood there. And she said it would, he said it would heal and all, and the blood would dissipate eventually. But, so she did, doesn't need any retinal surgery like that she did on the other eye. So praise God for that. Uh, you might wonder why I'm doing the Frankenstein thing right here. <laughs> I, I had a, a precancerous um, birthmark, uh, not birthmark, uh, I wish, uh, uh, age spot over here. <laughs> uh, they, call it, they call it actinic keratosis, and um, uh, when it's flaky like that, it can turn into uh, squamous cell carcinoma, so she freezed it off, and, uh, it's, but it's doing well, praise God. Alright, anything else? Why are you Amy? Oh yeah, Amy Dalton. Amy Dalton. Yeah, she's going to, uh, please pray for Amy Dalton, she's going to get, when's the surgery? I'm not sure, she said Tuesday, she's going to go. So let's please pray for Amy Dalton. Okay. What piece of mom? Jessica. Um, I have something called hyperemesis. Hyperemesis? I basically, uh, I'm, I'm pregnant and I pretty much throw up like all day, every day. Oh. And I sit. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll, we'll pray for you, Jessica. Isn't that nice to uh, have brothers and sisters like to autocorrect? <laughs> My brothers are the worst brothers. Oh, they're the worst. <laughs> I'll bet there are other people who disagree with you on that. <laughs> But that's what the sister usually says. <laughs> oh man, my brothers. <laughs> Alright, anything else? Alright, well then let's pray. Father, we thank you for all that you do for us and we pray that your name always be hallowed. Um, um, we know that, Lord, you heard the, the, um, all the different needs, the physical needs. We ask you, Father, if it be your will that you heal them. Uh, of their physical ailments and make them well and, and that, that you make it abundantly clear that the healing came from you and, and uh, that they praise you for it and also um, any emotional concerns, worries, fears, um, uh, things that are, weren't spoken, any addictions or anything like that, Lord, we ask you to heal them all and make them well, all to your glory. And so Father, now please, uh, uh, guide the, the junior church teachers and help them to teach correctly and watch over the children, help them uh, to be well behaved and to, to attentive and to learn. And Father, please guide me. I, I want only your truth to come out of my mouth, so uh, please guide my every word and uh, so that um, uh, what you want me to say will be said. In our Lord Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, Junior Church. Oh, we got to know the class.
All right. Does everyone have a bulletin? Let me make sure this is working for them back there. Can you see me okay back there? <laughs> All right. All right, everyone has a bulletin? All right. Well, um, this morning we are continuing our sermon series, The Book of John. And the title of the sermon this morning is, I Must Decrease. I Must Decrease. You know, um, sometimes a preacher, a pastor, uh, will be called upon to preach a positive sermon, you know, a lovey-dovey kind of sermon and all that. And um, I hope that sometimes you can tell that I do that. Other times, a pastor is called upon to, to preach a, um, what you might call a negative sermon, you know, one that um, isn't so lovey-dovey, but is necessary to preach. Um, and, it, and it's interesting, it's all kind of came together in, in this message this morning, I must decrease. Look what it says in your bulletin. Very first thing, to worship Jesus, to love on Jesus, means to obey Jesus. Amen? Now, is this Aldo uh, Pucci making this up? No. Look what came out of our Lord Jesus' mouth. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Now, notice our Lord Jesus did not say, um, uh, to be saved, keep my commandments. Uh, if you want to hold on to, my, to your salvation, keep my commandments. Um, you know, if you don't keep my commandments, I'll kick you out of heaven or anything like that. It says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Right? Uh, do you love the Lord? Yes. Yeah. 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 Amen. All right. Um, and, uh, and so we, you can't hand your love to somebody. Right? Um, uh, so, you know, we have things come up. You know, uh, somebody needs to go to the doctor or the hospital. If you love them, you're going to take them there. Right? if they can't go themselves, or you're going to be there for them, you know. One of the things that Jesus, through Paul, commands us to do is this right here. Hebrews 10, 24, 25. Let us consider one another. Okay, so just, if we just stop there for a moment. Let us consider one another. Now, what does that mean? We need to be on each other's minds. You see, I need to be on your mind, you need to be on my mind. You need to be on each other's mind, which also means you need to know each other, right? Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. So, you know, we're not just on each other's mind and, and around each other just, you know, just to pass the time. We're here to provoke each other unto love, to love on each other, to encourage each other to love, and to good works. To serve the Lord, to do things for the which you can only do good works after you're saved, that God considers good. And look what it says, connected to that, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. So, as is the manner, as the manner of some is. So, why would those two be connected? Because if we're not together, how are we going to provoke each other unto love and to good works? You see, you see, how are we going to do that if we're not together? But exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. Okay? Now, with that in mind. I want to show you one of the worst things I've seen in Christianity in a long time. And you might think, what's the big deal? And that is this. You're going to see this come up in September online on that, that Facebook that I'm disliking more and more by the day. This right here. Back to church Sunday. It's back to church Sunday. You know, uh, let's welcome every back, everyone back to church. And this entire back to church Sunday movement is based on a couple of things. First of all, these so-called church leaders 
promote this garbage to assumed Christians, I mean, to, to alleged Christians, assuming that they are going to treat church like, like kids treat school, right? You have the summer off. Right? It's summer vacation from church. And so, and so because of that mentality, then they assume something else. That this is just their mentality. And as a church leader, you can't do anything about it. So just go with it. You know? Just have a welcome back to church on Sunday. You know, Sunday. Welcome back to church. To get them to come back. Now, not only does that lower the bar of expectation significantly, it's not even biblical, right? <laughs> I put this in your book. God wants us to get together to worship Him. He does not say get together to worship me unless it's nice outside or unless we have something else to do. You know, now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying don't go on vacation or anything like that. You know, I'm not saying that. You know, we had a couple, uh, a husband and wife come a couple of years ago. And the very first time they came, they said to me, now we just want to be up front and tell you that if the weather's nice, he's not going to be here because he's going to be golfing. <laughs> you see what I deal with? Huh? Do you see, do you, do you hear what I hear? God wants us to, to, to be together, to provoke each other into love and to good works. He wants us to get together to exhort each other, to love on each other, to take care of each other. And he tells us, the closer we get to the Lord returning, the more important this is going to be. Amen. We, we have to stick together. You know, I think many of us, and especially me in the tradition I grew up in, you know, it, it was you attended church. You know what I mean? You attended church like you're going to the movies. You know, instead of, I mean, work, you know, the, the church I grew up in, I didn't know, even know anybody in the church. You know? No one knew me. You, you went to Mass, you left. Sometimes you left right after communion because you couldn't wait to go home. You know? Let alone be around to talk to anybody. To get to know them, to be there for them. And he tells us the closer we get to the Lord returning, the more important we are going to be to each other. And this is a command from him, not a suggestion. It's not optional. I'll show you how this all ties in together. John chapter 3. <clears throat> okay, everyone there? All right, so... Uh, we're going to start by God's grace with verse 22. After these things came Jesus and his disciples into the land of Judea, and there he tarried, or stayed with them, and baptized. And John also was baptizing in a Anon near to Salem, because there was much water there. Well, well, why would you need much water if you're just sprinkling? Because they're not sprinkling, they're dunking. And they came and were baptized, for John was not yet cast into prison. It would have been hard for him to do it if he was in prison. And there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizes, and all men come to him. So notice, this would suggest that Jesus actually did the baptizing, right? Did, or was a part of, was one of the ones who did the baptizing, right? But then John, uh, in chapter 4, elaborates or corrects really what the situation was. And look at John chapter 4, verse 1 through 3. God willing, we'll cover next week. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, and notice what it says in parentheses, Though Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples. He left Judea and departed again into Galilee. Now, you know, this isn't some huge doctrinal issue or something like that. I don't believe, but it's just to clarify. Okay? All right, so back to our scripture now. 
But verse 27, John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except to be given him from heaven. Ye yourselves bear me witness that I said I am not the Christ, but that I am sent before him. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom which standeth and heareth him rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. So he's happy for him. This, my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. All right, so when there's a wedding, guests are usually invited, right? Uh, not always, but most of the time. The guests that in, are invited typically are one. The reason they're invited is because they care about the couple, right? Uh, they love the couple. They, 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 uh, they know the couple knows that they're likely to... Um, add to the celebration because they're so happy that for them you know it's their day they're there to help them celebrate their day but even the groomsmen who aren't you know who are the closest to the groom isn't the groom right the the one that's a groom is the one that's with the bride that's the groom so it's not their day. It's not the bridesmaid's day. It's the husband and wife's day. And so this, I put this in your bulletin. The Bible makes it clear that believers who make up the body of Christ are the bride of, the, of Christ. Okay? Look what it says in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 11, verse 2. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. And that's the body of Christ. All those who are actual believers uh, make up the body of Christ who are, we are the bride of Christ. Okay? And then in Revelation 19 verses 7 and 8, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb. Who's the lamb here? Jesus, right, is come, and his wife had made herself ready. Who's his wife? The church, us, right? And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. How do we become white? The blood of Jesus, right? For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints, and we got our righteousness from the Lord Jesus. So John the Baptist here tells his disciples and the Jews that he is not the Christ. He tells them that Jesus must increase and I must decrease. In other words, John has said, I got to get out of the way. John is saying, I got to get the focus off of me because the focus needs to be on Jesus. And then John the Baptist goes on to elaborate about the fact that Jesus is the Son of God. And he alone is worthy of worship. Look at verse 31. He that cometh from above is above all. And he that is of the earth is earthly and speaketh, speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. And what he hath seen and heard, that he testifieth. And no man receiveth his testimony. He's referring to Jesus. He that hath received his testimony hath set to his seal that God is true. For he whom God has sent speaketh the words of God. For God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. The Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things into his hand. So what's in the Son's hand? Everything. Everything. All things. He that believeth on the Son. Now, now get a look at this. Verse 36, right? He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life and he that believeth not the son shall not see life but the wrath of God abideth on him now notice the tense here the verb tense believeth that means that's present tense right that means believes believes so notice something the Lord Jesus Christ had not gone to the cross yet he hadn't died for our sins yet. But who told us that he would? God did. God's word did. 
So the fact that God told us that he would die on that cross and pay for our sins, and the fact that he was there on, the, on this earth meant what? It was as good as done. So notice, notice John isn't saying he who will believe on him after he's died on the cross has everlasting life. Is that what it says? What does it say? He that believeth on the Son has everlasting, and it's always been that way. It has always been that way. Salvation has always been by faith, by grace through faith, believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. All right. So John the Baptist is saying, look, this is all about Jesus. It's not about me. I'll do what I can to help him, but he is the Lord. I must decrease. Notice he didn't say, I must go away completely. You know, I must not serve the Lord at all. He's saying, I must decrease. So what did John the Baptist mean by this? Well, uh, you know, we need to consider the context here. He came on the scene and began preaching in the wilderness of Judea, right? Baptizing thousands and thousands of people. Everyone heard of him. You know, everyone heard him preach, and, and many people were baptized by, by him. But then our Lord Jesus came on the scene. Then John the Baptist pointed to him and said what? Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. And so when the Lord Jesus came on the scene and John the Baptist pointed to him and said, He's the one. What happened? They stopped, the, you know, they stopped going to John the Baptist and they started going to whom? Jesus. Right? They stopped being baptized by John the Baptist and his disciples. And they started being baptized by Jesus' disciples. The disciples started going to Jesus. Rightly so. And who was the first one to say that? John the Baptist. See how he's decreasing? I must decrease, but he can increase. And so that's why I put this in your bulletin. So we saw a transfer here where John the Baptist used to have great crowds coming to hear him, but now they're going to hear Jesus. John the Baptist used to be the greatest preacher in the land, but no more. Now it's God in the flesh. How can you compare with that? And so John tells him, look, I told you I'm not the Christ. You know, I'm not, I'm not Jesus. He must increase, I must decrease. And that was his attitude. That's what he wanted to happen. It's not grudgingly like, you know. I mean, could you imagine if the Lord Jesus came walking in right here? Do you think I would keep blabbing? Huh? I mean, that would be the most ridiculous thing on this planet. I would shut my mouth and, and go sit down and listen to him. So... This ties into something else. And look at Philippians chapter 2 here. This whole idea of decreasing. So that, so that our Lord Jesus increases. This is Paul writing to the Philippians, inspired by God, right? If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort in, of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels of, uh, and mercies, Fill ye, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the so notice first of all, being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Okay? So with this whole idea of decreasing, what I want to focus on this morning is humility. Is humility. You know, I must decrease. So what is Paul telling them and telling us? What is God telling us through Paul? 
he, say, he was telling them that they need to be of the same mind, first of all. Now, that doesn't mean for us all be of the same mind but think incorrectly, right? There are plenty of, uh, you know, Muslims are all of the same mind. They're all just deadly wrong. Right? But be of the same mind, the mind of Christ. You know, the, the, the Bible, what the Bible says, it says having the same joy, being like-minded, being of one accord, right? And then he says, look, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. And you know what? That is an outstanding definition of humility. Esteeming others better than yourself. And a lot of people misunderstand what this means. Uh, and they, what they think is to esteem others better than yourself means that you need to think that other people are better than you are. You know, that somehow other people, you know, are um, uh, you know, better in some way. And that's not what humility is. Look what I put in your, your bulletin. To esteem something is to value something. When we esteem others better than ourselves, it means that we are making them more valuable than ourselves. It means that to me, you are more important than I am to myself. And I am more important to you than you are to yourself. That's what it means to esteem others more than yourself. Not to think that they're better than you or something, but that you care more about their welfare then you do your own welfare. That's what that means. So when I make decisions about how things are going to affect me and how things are going to affect you, the Bible tells me that I need to esteem you more than myself. If one of us has to suffer, it needs to be me, not you. You see? And the same with you toward me and with each other. That's what it means to esteem others more than yourself. If one of us is going to be a failure, it's going to be me. You see? Because I want to make sure that you succeed because to me, you are more important than I am. You following me here? You know, it's more important that you succeed then I succeed. It's more important that you be blessed by God than I be blessed by God. That's what it means to esteem others better than yourself. You see? So look at what God is saying. Look at verse 3 there. Um, in, you know, in this, in this scripture. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. Don't, don't fight about things, you know, and, and um, you know, trying, trying to get credit for things and all that. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. And then how are you going to do that? Look at verse 4. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. It is being concerned about the welfare of others over our own welfare. But to do that, we cannot keep focusing on me, myself, and I. Amen? Amen? Of course we have things that we need to do. Right? There are things that get our attention. Like, hey, honey, I got a big black spot in my eye. All right, sweetheart, you just got my attention. You know? Of course. But we also notice it says, look not every man on his own things, but, but notice there's a key word here. But every man also. So he's not saying don't look at your things at all. But he's saying also on the things of others. We need to look at others. But I would say most people, and, and I don't know if I would be too off, far off to say even most Christians have the attitude, my success is what's important. My prosperity is what's important. My finances are what's important. You know what I mean? My health is what's important. So they get all caught up into their own lives because what's important? 
Me, myself, and I. And you know, today, it's so easy to act like you care about someone by seeing something on Facebook and giving them one of those hug emojis, right? Mm -hmm. Giving them a care, like you really did something for them. So what happens? You give them a care, and what, then what do you do? Me, myself, and I. Right? That's not really caring. That's not esteeming others above yourself. Hey, do you remember when we used to call each other? Huh? You know, now this is what happens with Facebook nowadays. Nowadays, if you get on that goofy Facebook and you see that someone's not dying, they must be okay. Right? They must be okay. It used to be, you know, if you saw, oh, it looks like, boy, it looks like it, he's not feeling too well. You know, later on you might call them, hey, how you doing? But now with Facebook, you get on there, well, I don't see that he's dying, he must be all right. <laughs> Am I right or not? Yeah. So God wants our attitude to be, I'm concerned with your prosperity, your spiritual blessing, your education. I'm more concerned about your success than I am mine. You are more important to me than I am to myself. That's what he, the attitude he wants us to have. I'm willing to make sacrifices for you is the attitude he wants us to have. And if one of us has to fail, let it be me. Not you. Because you are more important to me than I am to myself. That's what humility is. That's what it means to esteem others better than yourself. It's not to go around and say, oh, I must be the worst Christian in the world, or, you know, you know have your head hanged down. That's not humility. The Bible doesn't even tell us to have that attitude. Okay? But let's continue on. Uh, look at what uh, God through Paul says uh, some more in, in Philippians 2, verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So who also had this mentality? Of course, our Lord Jesus Christ. He exemplified this. Now, did the Lord Jesus think others were better than he was? Was anyone better than the Lord Jesus Christ? Of course not. Yet he had this attitude of esteeming others better than himself. So it doesn't mean he had some kind of delusion that other people were above him or something like that. What it means is that he put others' well-being above our own. And then, look, he continues here in Philippians 2. Who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. He was justified to be equal with God because he is God. That's what this means. But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in earth and things in the earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. So our Lord Jesus wasn't self-deprecating. He wasn't saying, uh, well, you all obviously are better than I am. He's saying, I'm going to esteem you better than I, am, I do myself. I'm going to make your benefit more important than my reputation is what he's saying. I'm going to make your success, you know, more important than my own comfort, my own pleasure, you know, my own prosperity or success. So I'm going to be a servant. I'm going to be obedient unto death. 
even the death of the cross. Why? Because he loved us. He esteemed us up, up, above himself. He wanted us to have everlasting life. So what happened? Look at, at the end. Matthew 27, 42. They're mocking the Lord Jesus on the cross, right? He saved others. He cannot save himself. If he be the king of Israel, let him come down from the cross and we will believe him. So I put this in your bulletin. The Lord Jesus could have saved himself, but he didn't. He didn't save himself. He didn't serve himself. He didn't minister himself. He saved others. He helped others. His life was about others. He sacrificed of himself. And he gave us the best example of how we should be. Now, why is this important? Well, we see, you know, John the Baptist was a great preacher, right? As a matter of fact, look what our Lord Jesus had to say about John the Baptist. Matthew 11, 11, Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. So the Lord Jesus is saying, look, nobody's ever been greater on this planet than John the Baptist. No one's ever been a greater preacher than John the Baptist. And what is John the Baptist saying? I must decrease so the Lord can increase. But you see, I, I saw one this morning. A, a, a storm woke me up and on. And I was, all right, now I'm awake. Uh, I saw one this morning on, on the TV. Many pastors and preachers who are interested in their own reputation. You see? But what did Jesus say? You know, he wasn't concerned about his reputation. Many of these preachers today are more interested in their, in their own reputation than, the, than they are the blessings of the people hearing their sermons people listening them, to them preach. They were more interested in increasing their popularity and increasing their financial status. You know, the accolades, the, the fame and the fortune. But I'm telling you, the great preachers are the ones who say, I must decrease so that the Lord increases. You see? Those are the ones <clears throat> You might say, well, can't Jesus increase and the preacher increase? Or can't Jesus increase and we all increase? No. No. You see, for me as a pastor, as a preacher, I must decrease. I have to decrease. You know, I, ha I have to. And there's some reasons for that uh, I'm going to mention here in a moment. But the Apostle Paul was a great example of this. Well, you know, let me say now, because if I am motivated by me, by my self-increasing, then I'm going to be concerned about what you all think of me. Right? And I can't be. Otherwise, I'm going to skip this part. I'm going to skip that part. That person might be offended. I better not do it. You, know, you see? And you know what that would make me? Useless. Useless. So you take the Apostle Paul, for example. Look at Acts chapter 19, verse 10. And this continued by the space of two years, so that all they which dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. And, and when they're talking about Asia here, talking about uh, the area of Turkey, you know, Asia Minor, all through, which is a large area, okay? In the space of two years, everyone heard the, uh, the word of Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. And then in uh, chapter 19, verse 26 of Acts, Moreover, ye see and hear that none alone at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, this Paul hath persuaded and turned away much people, saying that they be no gods which are made with hands. So he's turning them away from these false gods. And then in Acts chapter 20, verse 26 and 27, 
Wherefore I take you to record this to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. So your blood's not on my hands. I told you. I warned you. Paul's saying everyone in Asia there heard the gospel from him. He made sure of it. You know, the fact that our Lord Jesus died and you know, uh, on the cross and was buried and rose bodily again on the third day. He preached it publicly and from house to house he went two years turning them away from their false <coughs> wicked religion. So then he writes to Timothy, right? Look at Timothy chapter, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 and 8. For God hath, so remember, you know, he's giving Timothy advice and all as well. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of our testimony or of our Lord. Now notice the next words here. Nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Now why is he saying that? Why is he saying, uh, don't be ashamed of me as well? Yeah, that's Kind of, that's kind of bad, isn't it, to have to say to your friends, hey, don't be ashamed of me. But if we look at how Paul's life ended, you know, best we can tell, this was the last epistle that Paul wrote, you know, um, from Rome, locked up in a prison cell. He writes this down. You know, not everyone got saved, of course, but everyone heard the gospel. Many people did. And then look at 2 Timothy verse 1. I mean, uh, chapter 1, verses 13 through 15. The Bible reads, Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me, in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed unto thee keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. This thou knowest, that all they which are in Asia be turned away from me, of whom are Phygelus and Hermogenes. So at the end of his life, best we can tell, at the end of his life, after spending all that time sharing the gospel, leading many to Christ, it says they all turned on me. You know, he planted these churches. He spent all the time praying for them. Why is he locked up? Huh? Why is he locked up? Because of these things. Because of his work. And he said, that they've turned on me. These churches have turned on me. And then he names a couple of the ringleaders. Now let me ask you. Uh, were these people... These people who believed the gospel and were part of the body of Christ, the fact that they turned on Paul, does that mean they weren't saved? No. No. No, it means they didn't like Paul. You know, it wasn't popular to be around Paul. He was in prison, for one thing. And there were some other reasons that, you know, where associating with Paul cramped their style. But it doesn't mean they weren't saved. It means they didn't believe the gospel just because they didn't like him. But he's writing to, Tim to Timothy and saying, Look, uh, don't be ashamed to be associated with me. Don't you do it too. Be a partaker of the affliction of the gospel. Now, I'm in jail. A lot of people don't want to be associated with me. A lot of people don't want to stand with me right now. But it doesn't make them wicked people. It doesn't mean that they're not saved. Okay. So then 2 Timothy chapter 4. Look what, what he then says in chapter 4. We'll wait for the kids to study. Yeah. Chapter 4, verse 1.
Okay, so 2 Timothy chapter 4. Look what it says in verse 1. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at the appearing of his kingdom, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, repro reprove, rebuke, exhort with all longsuffering and doctrine. For the time will come well, then, when they will not endure sound doctrine. Guess what's going on today? But after their own lust shall they reap to themselves teachers having itchy ears. So the people themselves have itchy ears, right? And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of the ministry. For I am now ready to be offered in the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Who here loves his appearing? Amen. Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. So again, come to me as soon as you can, Timothy. For Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica, Cretans to the Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. And Tychicus have I sent to Ephesus. Now get a load of this, all right? The cloak that I left at Troas with Carpus, when thou comest, bring with thee, and the books, but especially the par parchments. Okay. So what is he saying to Timothy? Hey, could you bring my coats and books to me because everyone else has turned on me? Could you bring them to me, please? Now, here is a man, the Apostle Paul, who definitely decreased. Amen? Amen? Look at all that he did, and he's in a cell. Everyone, just about everyone has deserted him. But how was he before? He was famous. He profited from the Jews' religion. He was doing really well. But then he decreased so that Jesus could increase. He, his life ended in the jail, best we can tell. He ends his life with almost no friends sitting in a jail cell. Why? Because he had the same attitude as John the Baptist. Now, as I was alluding to a little earlier, sometimes people may not understand some of the things that I've preached. Or why I've preached the way I have. But I'm going to tell you something. If I got up here week after week and tickled your ears, I would be worse than useless to you. Worse than useless to you. And the reason I would be tickling your ears, as I said, is because I would want to increase. But who decreases when that's the case? Jesus. If I never preached a negative sermon, only preached positive things, that would cause me to increase. Look, let me tell you folks, uh, one of the guys I saw this morning was Joel Osteen. You know, what I know about psychology, I could be Joel Osteen on steroids if I wanted to be. You know that, right? And I'm not saying that to puff myself up or anything. I'm saying he's a complete amateur. You know? But man, is Jesus decreased with him. You can just hear it. But I can't tell you how many people have left our church because they didn't like what I preached. I know it's been quite a few. But look, folks, if I keep preaching and I'm the only one left in this room, then so be it. 
I don't want that to happen. You know, I love you all very much. But, you know, if that's, if that's what happens, that's what happens. Period. Why? Because I esteem you more than I do myself. And I pray that you esteem me more than yourself and each other more than yourselves. So that's why I put this in your bulletin. We have to put each other above ourselves. And the only way that we're going to do that is to be together in the same room regularly. Then be there for each other throughout the week. You know, I, I got to admit, I'm starting to dislike my Facebook and, and such things more and more. You know? How did it used to be? How did church members know what was going on in the church? They came to church. They read things in their bulletin. They saw announcements. They talked to each other. They called each other on the phone. You know, I don't even like texting. You know, they called each other, talked to each other. Yeah, so we have this prayer. I like to do it with the prayer thing. And just call each other, talk to each other, be here together. You know? I mean, really. Half the time you don't know if people saw it or not. You know, it's it was so much nicer when we just talked to each other. So that's why I put this in your bulletin. We need to make every effort to show up whenever we get together. Some Sundays are more difficult than others. You know, frankly, my intestines were on fire last week. But that's the way it goes. That's why I said what I said to you, Peggy. When you said, I don't know if I can make it with this foot, but I'm, I'm not going to miss church. I said, that's the attitude. Now, look, if you're bleeding to death, please go to the emergency room. <laughs> we don't want your blood all over the carpet. You, know you see my point? Do all that you can. Because we need each other. You know, we need to put each other above ourselves. We need to stop treating this like it's optional. If we love the Lord, we need to obey Him. Period. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, well, let's pray. Amen. Father, pray, well, I praise you for your word. I praise Amen. you for your church family, this church family, Lord, and, and um, all that you've done for us over the years. And, and we ask you, Father, to guide us and, and direct us in all that we do. And, Father, help us to put each other above ourselves. And help us to really know each other and to love on each other. And help us to... Um, to make sure that none of us ever thinks that uh, we're by ourselves on this planet. You know, in addition to you, that we are here for each other always. And um, uh, help us to help each other to, to grow in your word and, and to help people to get saved and, and to, to love on each other. In all Lord Jesus' name we pray, amen. And by the way, let's be sure to call Carol, huh? Um, she would normally be here. I know she had her, her CT scan. It's hard to get a hold of her. That's the problem. Uh, her phone, for whatever reason, doesn't but it's, I don't know if we have to go to her home or send smoke signals or something. Uh, let's see what we can do to get a hold of her. Because, you know, she would, she would be here. But she had this CT scan of her lungs, and she said that before they thought that she had a tumor in her lungs. And so that could be what's going on. I don't know. So let's make sure we get a hold of her. All right, all right, let's sing that song. <laughs> Exciting, all eight of the kids knew the verse for the month. All so right, good job. <laughs>
Father, we thank you so much when we come together and sing praises to your holy name. Father, we thank you so much that Jesus humbled himself to come to earth to save us. Father, we pray now that you would watch over us and keep us safe till we come again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.